morning everyone and uh, good to see you all this morning. Thank you for joining class. Uh, before we look at the kingdom of God uh, and study further, let's just pause for a word of prayer. Can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Okay, Jeffina, thank you. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. Uh, we thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful class we are about to have. God, you have called us uh, to leave your kingdom now here on earth. We thank you so much for, for your kingdom. And you have called us to be a builders of the kingdom. God, everything that we study today, let, let that encourage us to follow you more. Let that encourage us to seek you more. And help us to open our mind and heart and listen to your words and to live an amazing life with you, God. And help us to be bold and to preach the gospel. Uh, help us to let everyone down here on this earth to know about your kingdom so that they can be happy in you. We thank you so much for coming down. We thank you so much for giving your life. And help us uh, good Wi-Fi connections that we need. And help us to concentrate. And we ask our Holy Spirit to guide us through everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jeffina. Um, <coughs> sorry. So we are looking at uh, uh, the kingdom of God. We've been studying the kingdom of God. Uh, in chapter one, we saw that uh, the kingdom of God is a major theme throughout uh, the Bible. And um, God planned to have his kingdom here on earth, not just you know, at some point of time in history, uh, but he planned this even before the foundations of the world. So the kingdom of God uh, that God wanted to initiate here on earth was something that he thought about, he planned um, in his mind. It was a conceived idea plan in his mind, even before the foundations of the world. And that a kingdom that he had in mind was a kingdom that he prepared uh, for each one of us, uh, and we are the people who will inherit his kingdom. Uh, we are heirs with God and co-heirs with Christ, and God through us is, um, you know, uh, bringing about his kingdom, uh, government, his kingdom, reign, rule, um, power and authority and dominion here on the earth. And we saw how Jesus introduced his uh, uh, kingdom, and then we looked at, um, uh, you know, in chapter 2, we saw uh, the king and the kingdom. So God is the king of the kingdom. And so as a king, uh, what do we need to do? We need to praise, worship, and even our prayers, even when we pray, we need to acknowledge him as king. And then we looked at a very powerful verse in Psalm chapter 44, verse 4, um, it says, uh, where the psalmist says, uh, you are my king, O God, command uh, victory. So, you know, uh, and here the, the word victory is, uh, the root word is uh, uh, Eshua, which means from where we get the name Jesus and also means salvation. Uh, and we know salvation is a holistic, comprehensive word, uh, which means uh, healing, deliverance, prosperity and wholeness. And so when we pray, we need to, uh, you know, uh, pray and say, God, I like you to decree, uh, to command um, victory, okay, over any or every area of your life. Whichever area of your life you're looking for healing, deliverance, prosperity, uh, breakthroughs, um, this is a powerful prayer to pray. And then we also looked at Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, and we learned that, um, you know, God wants his kingdom to be a true expression of all who he is. So God wants his kingdom to be an expression of uh, who he is and what he uh, does. And we looked at the names of God and how, uh, you know, we can speak those names uh, even as we, um, uh, you know, bring about or even as we go about building God's kingdom here on earth. And then we looked at how the king introduced his kingdom uh, we looked at the threefold approach um, that Jesus took uh, to introduce his kingdom. The first thing is, anyone, which is the first one? Preaching. Preaching the good news about the kingdom. Second? Teaching the principles of the kingdom. 
Thank you, Anita. Teaching the principles of the kingdom and the third one is? Demonstrating. Yeah, demonstrating the power of the kingdom. So, uh, you know, we, we preach God's word, we teach God's word, but uh, the last one, demonstrating the power of the kingdom is something that all of us, you know, don't want to enter into or don't want to take it on. But this is what Jesus did and this is what he has given to us. Uh, remember, he said we can do greater things than what he has done. So we preach, teach, and also, uh, you know, uh, demonstrate the power of God through science, miracles, and um, wonders. So that is what we looked at in chapter 2. And then in chapter 3, we saw how, you know, um, Adam and Eve, they were given dominion uh, over the kingdom of God here on earth when God initiated his kingdom here and how they gave over their uh, lordship to Satan. And when Jesus died on the cross, how he redeemed uh, uh, back not only mankind to himself but also the power and the authority that man had given to Satan and uh, we see that you know um, uh, the the uh, God has redeemed that and given that to the church now uh, so the church uh, are the ones who have the keys of the kingdom which means they have the power and the um, authority and uh, the church uh, you know has the power and authority to bind on earth what is bound in heaven to release on earth what is released in heaven and who is the church the church belongs comprises of you and I saints believers uh, who are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ Jesus and uh, the most important point we saw is that the kingdom of God um, is that God released here on earth is a spiritual kingdom. That means it's a kingdom that is in our hearts and in our lives. Um, and we also saw there is another dimension of the kingdom, which is the natural dimension of the kingdom, the natural kingdom with, uh, with God himself when in initiate when he comes the second time on here on earth, he will overthrow the rulers and the authorities um, uh, uh, of the earth uh, and then he will establish his rule, thousand year millennium rule here uh, in Jerusalem and we will all be part of that um, natural kingdom. But for now it's a spiritual kingdom where we experience um, uh, the kingdom in our hearts and lives and through our hearts and lives uh, the kingdom of God is extended uh, in the natural in the geographical areas wherever we are living okay so we'll move on to chapter four uh, before we move on to chapter four anyone has any questions in chapters one to chapter three okay if there are no questions uh, we will move on to chapter four okay uh, kingdom thinking i hope you have your uh, uh, pdf uh, copies opened um, and you can follow through okay the teachings of Jesus on the kingdom of God uh, you know um, uh, is something that is uh, gives us a completely new perspective um, uh, a perspective a completely new perspective perspective from which we can think um, you know we can think from a completely new frame of mind uh, some of his teachings on um, the kingdom of God was radically different you know so um, uh, the teachings of the kingdom of God that Jesus taught uh, you know uh, teaches us to think from a very new or completely new uh, perspective um, and it radically affects our thinking our perspectives, our value systems, and our priorities. Okay, so it's something radically very different which affects our thinking, our perspectives, our value systems, and our priorities. Uh, the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 to 13. Can somebody read that, please? Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 to 13. Colossians 1, 12 to 13. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love thank you zeltoli so god has already qualified us okay uh, god has already qualified us it's like you know even before you wrote the test you've passed so god has already qualified us now what has god already qualified us for 
uh, he's qualified us to partake or to enjoy the inheritance he already has for his people. Okay, so he's already qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Saints in the light is basically believers. And, uh, you know, we belong to the kingdom of light. Um, we have been ushered in from or brought out from the kingdom of darkness and we've been ushered into the kingdom of light. And it says here, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. So we are in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus brought us out of the kingdom of darkness. Um, so the kingdom of Jesus is a kingdom of light and we've been brought out of darkness. Uh, just as uh, darkness and light are totally opposite to each other, so also is the kingdom of light and uh, that is the kingdom of Jesus and the kingdom of darkness, which is the kingdom of the devil. Okay, so these two things are just like uh, darkness and light are totally opposite. So also the kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of Jesus Christ, and the kingdom of darkness, which is the kingdom of devil, is con uh, uh, totally opposite. Okay, so the kingdom of uh, darkness is what we were used to living in. And, um, you know, we've been transferred into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, in, in fact, Jesus says that the kingdom of God is within us. The kingdom of God is within us. So the kingdom of God is within me. The kingdom of God is within you. Um, now, there is something about this kingdom that, uh, you know, uh, Jesus mentions in uh, John chapter 18, verse 36. John chapter 18, verse 36. Uh, you know, when Pilate asked Jesus, um, are you the king of the Jews? Um, uh, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Okay. Uh, Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus says, you know, uh, it's rightly just like you said. And Jesus goes on to say that my kingdom is not of this world. So Jesus is saying my kingdom is from above. It's a totally different kingdom. It does not belong to this world, which means that you and I are of a kingdom which is not of this world. And this is something that we need to keep in mind. Though we live here in this world, we do not belong to the world, which means we do not uh, uh, follow the patterns, the lifestyle, the thinking, and the culture of this uh, world. Okay, um, and John wrote in uh, one John chapter four verses five and six. He says, "They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them." Okay, so he's talking about the people of the world. Uh, John in 1 John chapter 4 verses 5 and 6 uh, John says you know they are of the world that means the people of this world they are of this world and hence when they speak they speak as citizens of this world because they speak according to the perspective the culture the thought processes the the, the mindset of this uh, world and uh, the world hears them why because they are talking um, a similar language and they are uh, adhering to a similar culture, a, a similar thought pattern of this uh, world. But he says that we who are of God speak as of God. Okay, so we belong to the kingdom of light. We belong to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And hence, uh, even though we live in this world, we don't speak we don't think, we don't behave, we don't dress, we don't act like the people of this world, but we speak as uh, as kingdom, uh, uh, children of the kingdom of light or heirs of the kingdom of um, God. So there's a difference even in our speaking, leave alone uh, thinking or the way we behave, we, the way we act, but even in our um, speaking. So even in our speaking, we need to adapt to a new way of uh, uh, speaking. We need to change the way we speak. We speak, um, you know, we declare, we speak, um, uh, uh, we command things, you know, uh, uh, in accordance to what God has declared in his word and what he has revealed in his word. And uh, we speak the things that are in heaven. We uh, we declare it here on um, earth. So we need to adapt to a new way of thinking um, 
just like we know we need to change and adapt to a new way of speaking similarly we also need to adapt to a new way of thinking a new frame of mind and uh, we call this as kingdom thinking so in this chapter we're basically going to be looking at uh, the uh, kingdom thinking just like to give you an example uh, now for example you know uh, in india uh, you know uh, uh, i mean uh, some of you are out of india but you know in india if you've seen india you know we uh, we don't follow lane discipline uh, when we are driving or riding uh, even if the signal is red you know some people uh, just cross the signal uh, they they don't just they just overlook the signal um, and also when it comes to you know uh, uh, you know eating things we just eat we just can throw it on the road we throw it on the street or uh, if we are in the car you know we're drinking a tea or uh, we're eating a snack uh, we just throw the tissue paper we just throw uh, you know whatever uh, uh, plastic bags covers we just throw it on the street um, that is how you know people uh, in India. The culture is that like that. Yeah, we don't follow traffic rules. We don't have lane discipline. But uh, just say, for example, I'm here in India, and you know, I'm um, I'm driving. I don't follow lane discipline. Just say I don't, you know, even stop at the, the red signal. I don't give way to others. I want to be first. I want to go first. You know, I keep um, uh, while driving. I'm I am eating something, and I just throw the tissue paper, throw the plastic bag on the street because that is the culture that you know we see here in India. But for example, I just go to New York, you know, and uh, I, 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 I live there. I learn how to drive there. Uh, I follow lane discipline. Uh, you know, I follow the rule of giving way to others, stopping, giving way to the other people, uh, following the traffic signal, um, you know, being very careful not to throw things on the street, uh, not to litter places around, uh, being very careful, being very mindful of all of these things. And I'm, I'm living there and I come back to India and I'm visiting uh, India. But then I go back to my, you know, old ways. You know, I um, don't follow lane discipline when I come to India. I just come, uh, you know, to um, uh, out of the airport and I'm eating something. You know, instead of finding a trash can, I just throw the, uh, the chocolate wrapper or I just throw the tissue paper anywhere. You know, don't follow lane discipline when I'm uh, driving. Don't follow the traffic signals. Uh, so we see that, you know, uh, two different cultures. But, um, you know, when when I go to New York, I adapt to that culture. I follow the lane discipline. I, I follow the rules there. I'm mindful that I don't throw things. But when I come back here, you know, I go back to my old ways. So there are two things that we can you know, for, learn from this example. The first one is, um, you know, the way we think uh, the culture, you know, uh, so impacts our behavior. Okay. So when I'm in India, I try to follow the, you know, just the free freedom to you know, follow the culture here. But when I go to New York, I follow the culture that is there. So, you know, culture uh, so impacts our behavior the second thing that i you know we can learn from this example is that you know we have a potential to change you know when i go to new york i make sure that i follow lane rules lane discipline follow the traffic signal i don't litter i don't throw things here and there i'm very careful i don't break the law so so also you know when uh, you know we we belong to the kingdom of god Okay, and that is the culture that we need to adapt. That is a culture that we need to live. And if we are, uh, um, if we are not uh, strong in our relationship with God, uh, we are not reading God's word. We are not praying. Then uh, you know uh, the culture that impacts us most is the cult is the behavior pattern that we will follow the most. So if we are following the cult the kingdom of god culture which means we are uh, we are in, uh, you know we are intimate with god we are reading his word uh, we are praying then that is the culture that is uh, you know uh, in, in uh, 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 that, that is inherent in us uh, and that is that will the culture that is in us will so impact our behavior our attitudes our thinking our lifestyle the way we live everything will be impacted by the uh, culture okay but if we if we uh, 
you know, feed the desires of our carnal nature and our flesh, then that is the culture that we are going to follow. And that is a, 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 a that is the behavior patterns and lifestyle, the thought process, the perspective, the frame of mind, which we think, which we act, which we behave. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying, right? Uh, I gave an example of two cultures, India and New York, and how, you know, we can change, we adapt and we change to cultures. And so it's important that, you know, we don't uh, keep changing from, uh, you know, uh, 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 behaving as uh, children of kingdom of, uh, of the kingdom of God and, you know, at times behaving as uh, uh, people of this world, you know. And we, we, we can't say that we can't change our behavior. We can change because from the example I gave you, you know, uh, when I go to New York, I'm so uh, conscious about uh, my uh, lane discipline, following the traffic rules and not littering the place. So we can't say that I cannot change. We all have the ability to change our thinking, uh, to change our perspective um, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, to change our thought process um, and to change our behavior. OK, and the culture that most influences us, whether it is uh, uh, the kingdom of God or the culture of this world, depends upon what we are feeding our, um, uh, our soulish uh, man, whether we are feeding our soulish man with the things of the world, uh, things of God, we're intimate with God, and then that culture becomes uh, dominant and that culture relates in uh, or, uh, or is manifested in our behavior, in our thought processes, in the way we think to life. Uh, and if we are feeding our carnal nature, feeding our soulish man with the carnal nature, with the things of the flesh, then we will be following the culture of this world. And it's seen in our behavior, in our thought process, and in the way we act and the way we do uh, life. I hope you understood what uh, I'm trying to say from this example. Yes, no? Okay, so it's important that, um, you know, so it's important that, you know, we uh, uh, adhere to the kingdom of God culture because that will influence our thinking and our lifestyle. And, um, and we can't say we can't change. Okay, from the example I gave, we can change. Okay, and uh, we can change and we can think like kingdom of God, uh, people of the kingdom of God. We can uh, live like uh, citizens of the kingdom of God. So we are in the kingdom of God and the culture of the kingdom of God is very different from the culture or the mindset of the uh, kingdom of this world. The mindset, the way of thinking, the patterns of thinking, the framework of thinking for thought and perception in the kingdom of God is very different from the kingdom of this um, world. So although we are living in this world, uh, you know, uh, we are called to live by the culture of the kingdom of God. We're called to think uh, like uh, people who belong to the kingdom of uh, God. And the fact is that we can do it. We can live here on earth in this kingdom, uh, in the kingdom of the world. We can um, live uh, uh, with the uh, kingdom culture. We can think uh, with the kingdom culture. We can think from the kingdom uh, perspective. OK, um, so the reality is that we are in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is in us. But unfortunately, you know, many of us have not transitioned into kingdom thinking. And that is why I, uh, the way we do life, the way we live, the way we think is not focused on, uh, you know, is not the way God thinks about us. Uh, or what uh, God has planned for us or what God has in mind for us. Uh, why? Because we have not transitioned, uh, you know, into thinking like that. We just said, OK, I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But, you know, there's a whole new dimension about that. It is we are now part of the kingdom culture. We are part of the kingdom of God. And we need to, you know, transition our thinking, our thought processes, the way we live, the way we do life according to that uh, kingdom uh, culture. But, you know, uh, I hope that um, we are challenged even as uh, we look at the kingdom of God and even as we look at the book Kingdom of Builder, Kingdom Builders to know that we are in the kingdom of God and we need to think from that kingdom perspective and uh, we need to begin looking at things the way Jesus looked at things. And uh, it's not impossible uh, to do that. If it was impossible, Jesus would have told us, 
he wouldn't have taught us all of these things but the very fact that he taught us about kingdom culture kingdom thinking kingdom uh, lifestyle through the uh, his teaching his preaching to the parables is because it is possible for us um, uh, to look at uh, things in that uh, in that way and it's possible for us to live and think um, uh, as kingdom citizens so we if we begin to look at things from a kingdom perspective you know our lives will be changed our lifestyles our behavior will be changed and we will demonstrate the kingdom of god which means that we will truly represent uh, all of who god is uh, uh, you know, through our lives. So that is what is the final outcome. The final outcome is not just living a culture, it's not just thinking the kingdom uh, patterns, think kingdom framework, but the final outcome is, is just so powerful, it's something just so big that we will actually be a rep true representatives uh, and we will represent all of who God is you know, uh, through the kingdom that we manifest in and through our life. So that is the bigger picture. And that is what excites uh, me. And I'm sure that's what excite, will excite each one of you. That the greater picture is that finally, you know, I'm going to be uh, representing or I'm going to be revealing all of who God is in his true sense, in his fullness here on earth, even as, uh, you know, I'm part of the kingdom of God and even as I'm extending and even as I'm building the kingdom of God here on earth, okay? So Jesus taught us a lot of... Um, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, things about kingdom thinking. We look at a few highlights of what kingdom thinking is like. Um, and this is how you and I need to be thinking as people of uh, God's kingdom. Uh, this is how we need to develop our kingdom mindset. Uh, this is how we need to develop a kingdom framework from which we look at things, uh, from which we need to perceive things, from which we need to make uh, choices and decisions. And if we will do that, you know, we will truly be a kingdom uh, community where we will have a kingdom culture among us. And, you know, um, having a, you know, a kingdom culture among us when we meet as believers will be so powerful that people who come from the kingdom of the world, you know, um, they would, uh, their lives would be impacted because uh, the kingdom community and the kingdom culture that is amongst us is so powerful that will impact them. Uh, even if you don't preach, teach, or even if you don't pray for them, it will just impact their lifestyle. So we look at a few things that Jesus taught uh, us about kingdom thinking before uh, we move on. Anyone has any questions? Am I very fast? Is it okay? If I'm very fast, please uh, type in the chat section. Yes, uh, I think it's Lubega, you had your hand up. Okay, sorry, Isaac. Yes, Isaac, go ahead. Yes, um, uh, from this explanation, because of this mind, uh, kingdom mindset or kingdom perspective, are we correct to infer that this is one of the reasons Paul advised that we should not be conformed to the world, but we should be transformed? Are we right to infer that, that because of this kingdom mindset, uh, we are in the world, but we should not behave like the world, but we behave like kingdom of God children. Eh? Are we right to infer that? Yes, you are right. Absolutely right. Yes. And that's what Paul is saying, because Paul knows that when we are born again, only our spirit man is born again. Um, but our soul, that is our mind, will, our emotions are not. And that's why he says we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Uh, because that's where the battle happens in the mind. And that's where, you know, um, everything that we think is um, uh, our thought process becomes in reality, uh, our actions, our character, it basically becomes who we are. So when we are thinking from a kingdom perspective, uh, the kingdom framework, then, you know, um, uh, we would, um, you know, automatically live uh, uh, knowing and mindful of who we are, what authority and power God has given to us, and how we can extend God's kingdom here, and how we can be, uh, you know, uh, uh, represent God for who, all who he is here on earth. Yes, it's right, Isaac. 
Does that help? Does it help, Isaac? Yes, ma. Thank you very much, ma. Thank you, Isaac. Okay, so we look at a few things that Jesus taught us about uh, kingdom thinking. Uh, the first one is that, you know, Jesus said is there's a higher standard of uh, thinking. So we look at Matthew chapter 5, verses uh, uh, 21 to uh, 30. Uh, so can somebody read that, please? Matthew 5, 21 to 30. Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 30. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gifts. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you. To the judge the judge hand you over to the officer and you'll be thrown into prison surely i say to you you will be by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. you have heard that it was said to those of old you shall not commit adultery but i say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Amen. Thank you, Jeffina. So here we see, you know, radical teaching of Jesus, something very radical. Uh, you know, the Old Testament uh, law, you know, seemed very heavy for people. They could not uh, keep the Old Testament law. They found it to they found it as a burden. But here, Jesus, as he introduced the kingdom, he raises the level. You know, he raises the level much higher. He uh, he raises the standard of living uh, higher. Uh, he describes the standards for kingdom living here, and it's much higher than even the Old Testament, which was you know so uh, like a burden on the people. Okay, so uh, Jesus is basically saying that if you think uh, you know uh, that if you murder someone, that is something serious. Uh, but Jesus is saying, but in the kingdom of God, uh, you know, just murder is not something that is big or serious. But hating someone is as serious a sin as murder. Okay, so he equates hating someone to murder. Okay, so, uh, uh, you know, he's saying that in the kingdom of God, yes, murder is a, a big serious sin. But even if you hate your brother or you hate your neighbor, hate your friend, that is also something as serious a sin as murder. So he equates murder and hating um, uh, together. The same keeps places on the same level. And you think if you commit adultery, that is sin. Yes, that is sin. But in the kingdom of God, if you look, lustfully at a woman um you know to possess her that is equally a sin you wouldn't have committed adultery but just looking at a woman lustfully to possess her is you know that's something that you've already committed adultery you've not done the act but just the thought process is like you know the act of adultery which is uh, a sin so he's placing uh, you know, adultery and looking lustfully as a woman on the same level. So here he is, Jesus is saying, you know, you need to deal with uh, in the kingdom of God. You need to deal with sin. And how do you deal with sin? Is you know, he's it's it sounds very harsh. It says, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. You know, Jesus is saying, be very severe with the way you deal with sin. There should be no tolerance to sin. There should be zero tolerance to sin. So even if it means you're going to feel pain in the process, you know, of cutting off something or dealing with your sin, you know, it's okay to go to that pain, but you need to deal with that sin. There should be zero tolerance to uh, sin. So, you know, um, 
uh, we, uh, you know, we think and live according to the culture that is around us. And just Jesus is telling us, don't think and live according to the culture, the norm, the thought process that is around you. You belong to the kingdom, and this is the way it is in the kingdom of God. You know, um, sometimes we justify when we look at uh, people around us who are not part of the kingdom, and we say, no, they do this. Uh, so I also can do this, you know, for example, children in school, you know, everybody in my class is copying, so I can also copy or, uh, you know, uh, everybody, um, uh, you know, manipulates or cheats and does things in, in office. So even I can do it. People lie, you know, that they have done this, 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 uh, they've, you know, completed this or they have done this work and, you know, they're lying because everyone in, in the workplace uh, lies. Or, you know, when you are in a uh, in an MNC, you know, um, um, you know, it's okay for people to, you know, even if you're married, you know, to have an extramarital affair, everybody is doing that, you, you justify yourself and say, it's okay. It's okay for us to marry a non-believer, you know, um, that's not, that's nothing wrong. It's okay for us to dress like the people of the world or, you know, when you're working in an MNC and you go for, uh, you know, parties or, uh, uh, you know, outings and, uh, you know, they serve drinks or, uh, you know, whatever, you know, you can, you say it's okay for us to do it because everyone around us uh, is doing it, but we can't justify, uh, you know, uh, uh, our actions uh, looking at the people of this world because they don't belong to the kingdom of God. They belong to the kingdom of this world. And because they belong to the kingdom of this world, they will live according to the culture of the kingdom of the world. But we don't belong to that kingdom. We are not of this world. And hence, uh, we cannot, you know, adhere to that culture. We belong to uh, a, a kingdom where the culture is that if something causes us to sin, then we cut it off. And um, uh, that is uh, our culture. That is the kingdom culture. And this is, uh, is, is a much higher culture we live by because we live by the kingdom of God. And so this, you know, challenges our thinking. Um, you know, we are uh, so inclined to uh, judging people or judging others uh, or judging ourselves based on the external behavior. Uh, but, you know, Jesus goes beyond the external and he's He's challenging us to address, you know, uh, the deeper issues that cause such uh, behavior. That means he's uh, challenging us to address uh, uh, our attitudes, our passions, the desires of our uh, heart. And that is what Jesus is trying to say. You know, you need to, uh, you know, even if you don't commit the act of adultery, which is something that is external, but he's going much deeper into our heart. And he's saying, you know, uh, uh, judge your uh, thoughts, your motives, your passions, uh, your sexual appetites, you know, uh, judge those things, uh, judge the, the attitudes, passions and desires of the heart. And, uh, you know, we will not be judged only for our deeds the things that we do, but we will also be judged for our motives, our thoughts, why we are doing what we are doing. We'll also be judged for the silent inner heart attitudes. We will also be judged for the things that we have in our heart, the things that we hold in our heart, which no one can see, but God alone can see. So kingdom thinking goes beyond external behavior. Um, Jesus is examining the heart here because hate is something that, you know, uh, people really uh, can't see. We can be nice to a person, but we can hate them. We can do things behind the back, um, uh, you know, to fulfill our hate. Um, nobody can read our lustful, uh, you know, um, uh, dirty thoughts. Um, but Jesus is saying, you know, he's, he says, examine your heart. And uh, he's exposing the wrong motives, attitudes and desires. And he's saying that, you know, look at those things and at any cost, eliminate that, you know, get rid of that, um, uh, because that is not what is going to enhance your kingdom uh, thinking. OK, another thing that Jesus taught us about uh, uh, kingdom thinking is about, you know, we need to uh, think in faith. OK, so think 
uh, kingdom thinking is about thinking. It's a culture of faith. Um, so to walk by faith is uh, a normal part of uh, a kingdom of life. Um, or uh, as kingdom citizens, you know, we need to walk by faith and not by uh, sight. We need to look at things from the perspective of faith, uh, which should become very normal for us. Okay, not by sight, but by faith. Uh, because kingdom of God is all about faith. And Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 22, he says, have faith in God. Mark chapter 11, verse 22, Jesus says, um, have faith in God. So a person who comes from a kingdom of uh, comes from a kingdom of God, you know, we need to look at things from um, uh, the eyes of uh, faith. Okay. Uh, we need to give up our right uh, to fit into God's reasoning, we can't understand God. We can't perceive uh, the, you know, uh, the thoughts of God or the the mind of God. Uh, but we need to give up that right to fit into God's reasoning. Sometimes we can't uh, understand or, uh, you know, logically reason what God is asking us to do. So we need to just give up our right to fit into God's reasoning, and, um, you know. Uh, uh, like people of this world, you know, um, uh, everything, you know, uh, they do or they think, they reason. And, um, you know, uh, and they try to fit God into uh, their box. So as uh, people of the world, you know, we try to reason things and we want to fit God into our box. We want to actually figure out everything. We need to, we want to understand everything before we even step out, even before we do it. Um, but, you know, in the kingdom of God, uh, you know, faith is something that uh, we need to walk by. You know, faith is something that we step out in. Uh, is we can't see, but we just believe. We can't uh, reason. We can't, uh, you know, uh, comprehend with our small minds. And we give up the right uh, to fit into God's um, uh, reasoning. Okay, but faith says that God is bigger than our reasoning. Okay, faith is says that God is bigger than our reasoning. So all we need to do as kingdom citizens at times is not just not that we don't use our mind. God, of course. You know, he's given us our mental faculties. He uses that. And that is why he says we need to be renewed by our mind, um, the areas of our mind. Uh, but there are times when we, you know, uh, uh, we can't reason. We can't logically think, uh, process it in our minds. But because God is telling us, you know, we just believe. We will just trust, we will just step out and we will just go with God, what God is asking us to do or saying or telling us to do. So in our thinking, you know, we need to begin to think um, uh, of faith. We begin to plan faith. We, we begin to see faith. Um, and when we do that, we'll begin to see impossibilities become uh, possibilities. Okay. So if, uh, for example, if God puts an assignment, um, in your life or he puts an assignment in our life and uh, in my life and he calls us to do something that's way beyond what you have ever done what you have ever thought or imagined um, you know in our natural mind in our own reasoning we can say god i can't do this you know uh, this is impossible uh, but we need to you know change into uh, kingdom thinking you know we need to say god because uh, uh, you know, uh, you've asked me to do this uh, because it is your word. This is your command. This is your plan. Uh, this is what you have thought for me. God, I'm just stepping out in faith. I'm just uh, believing by faith. I'm just going to do what you want me to uh, do. And, um, you know, with God, all things are possible. Just all things are possible for him who believes. So when you believe, you will see the impossible becoming uh, a possibility for you. You will see things happening in the natural. So we need to begin to think that way. Uh, but people can say, you know, what uh, you're thinking is not logical. Uh, how can you do it? You know, um, uh, people can laugh at us. Uh, for example, you know, um, uh, you may have a, 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 a good job, a high post, you're earning very well, and uh, God just calls you for a full-time ministry. Again, he asks you to go as a missionary to a remote uh, island or, uh, you know, uh, 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 a place in your own country where, uh, you know, the infrastructure is not very good. And so, you know, 
you just step out in faith and you say, God, I don't understand. I don't see. I just believe. I know that you're asking me to do this uh, and I will just do it. And, uh, you know, when you tell this to your colleagues, your family members, you know, they think that you are a fool. You know, you're leaving your good uh, position, a good job. What about your family's future, your children's future? Or maybe you're working abroad and, you know, um, uh, God is telling you, you know, go back to your own uh, go back to India and, um, you know, be a missionary in a remote place, uh, you know, somewhere in North India, some remote place. And you leave that and come. Your family is um, thinks that you are a fool. So, or the people around you uh, will think that you are a fool. So, uh, you know, according to this, the world, you know, you know, they might think that we are uh, foolish in our in, in the decisions that we are making. But as uh, citizens of the kingdom of God, you know, faith is part of our thinking processes. Faith is part of our perspective. Uh, it's part of the way you think and see things. And uh, we need to look at things through the eyes of faith. So kingdom thinking is thinking uh, inspired by faith in uh, God. So faith is, uh, uh, is so much part of our kingdom thinking. We need to look at things from the eyes of uh, faith. For example, even you know people who have uh, had... Um, you know, a medical um, uh, history or a problem and uh, the doctor tells them that, you know, you're a fool to, you know, to believe that God is going to heal you. I know many people, especially, you know, uh, uh, pe uh, women who are pregnant uh, and, uh, you know, ha having health issues and the doctor says terminate the baby, but they prayed and God says, you know, uh, you know, I will save the baby and they're just going by faith. The doctor thinks that they are a fool. Uh, to do that, but they have given birth to healthy babies and there have been mighty uh, witnesses of that, uh, of uh, God's goodness in their life. So sometimes, you know, um, uh, yes, we go by uh, what the doctors say, we go by uh, reasoning, uh, logical reasoning, but sometimes, you know, God tells us to step out in faith. He asks us to do otherwise. And, you know, when God tells us, oh, we just believe because he's a God who can make the impossible uh, possible, okay? So um, another thing that we can look at, um, you know, uh, uh, in our kingdom thinking, how, you know, another thing that Jesus taught about kingdom thinking uh, is, uh, you know, for the king's sake, okay? Uh, do things for the uh, sake of the king. So we read this in uh, Mark chapter 8, verses 34 to 35. We also see this in Matthew chapter 10, verse 39, uh, Matthew 16, 25, Luke 9, 24, Luke 17, 33, and John 12, uh, 25. So can somebody read Mark chapter 8, verses 34 and 35, please? Mark 8, 34 and 35. Mark chapter 8, verse 34 and 35. When he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to have to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. Thank you, Jeffina. So this is um, you know, a very radical invitation. Uh, Jesus said, if you want to come after me, you have to deny yourself. You have to take up your cross and follow me. So if you desire to save your life, you will lose it. And if you lose your life for my sake and the gospel, you will save it. So this is another dimension of kingdom thinking that Jesus was introducing. And it's something very radical as well. Uh, what is Jesus meaning here? Uh, what he means here is there will be times, uh, you know, when, um, uh, you know, you and I will have to lose our life for the sake of the gospel, which means, you know, we'll have to make decisions, choices uh, in life and do things um, which in the eyes of the world can be counted foolishness, uh, but we will, you know, any which way, go ahead and do it uh, for the sake of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the uh, gospel. And this is kingdom thinking, you know, saying that I'm willing to do it uh, for his um, sake. For an example, you know, uh, um, you know, um, uh, if you want to, you know, 
get into full-time ministry and get into Bible college, you know, people can say, why full-time ministry? Why Bible college? You know, you can, um, you can get a good degree in science or commerce or MBA. You know, you could, uh, uh, you could uh, earn well and you can also do ministry at the same time. And I'll give you examples of uh, numerous people who are in, uh, in the, in the business world, in the, uh, in the secular world who are doing well, but also uh, serving the Lord and saying, you know, if you go into full-time ministry, you know, you won't earn well, you will lack things, you'll have no money, uh, you know, your family will, uh, uh, how will you sustain your family? So, you know, these are the, you know, some things uh, which uh, uh, the people of the world can tell you. And when you step out and say, no, I'm going to go into full-time ministry, I'm going to um, uh, study in Bible college, they will think that's no total foolishness. Like even when I made a decision when I was in uh, 12th grade, you know, after that, I said, I'm going to Bible college. Uh, uh, people um, you know, around me said this to me and, you know, people even in church said, uh, you know, uh, why do you want to do it? You know, do something like your sisters who are well educated and, you know, in science field and, you know, all of that. Uh, you know, do why? Why do you want to go into ministry? You know, it's not going to help you. You can always um, get a good degree, um, you know, master's degree as well, and you can uh, serve God. But when you say no, you know, this is my God's calling. This is what God has called me to do. They will think you're foolish, or you know, when I stepped into. Uh, full-time ministry and getting into Bible college, they thought, you know, I was taking the easy way in life, uh, you know, because in Bible college, you don't have to study much, you don't have to do anything much. That was the way people thought, uh, you know, and it was very discouraging for my parents to hear what uh, people around them um, said. But, you know, um, uh, some decisions that we make can be foolishness in the eyes of the world, but that is what God has called you to do. Then we just take that on. We will do it for the sake of Christ. We do it for the sake of the gospel. Okay, we'll just stop here. It's time for our break. Uh, we've already passed one minute. We'll take our break and then we'll come back uh, uh, at 10. <laughs> 